Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So this is going to be a bit of a special video, not in terms of quality or anything like that, but in terms of the uh, information that's going to be supplied within it. So, um, for those of you who are working with Arduino, and you might have a Nano or whatever, and you might have one of these as well, which I'll show you in a minute, and you're trying to interact with a Modbus device, you'll find that it works with the standard library libraries with no real problem. But, if you decide to move over to the SP32, uh, one like this here, well in fact any SP32, you'll be in for a nasty surprise. And that is that Modbus simply doesn't work. The libraries which you can get online do not work. It's really as simple as that. As far as I know there have been no changes to that either, they still don't work. So a couple of months ago I was desperate to get ESP32 to work with Modbus and I searched, I searched, I looked at YouTube, I looked all over the place and I couldn't find one single trace of, uh, of information about it really. People were recognising it doesn't work but there was no fix. So anyway, um, I decided to investigate the problem myself and I discovered the problem and I worked out a cure um, and this was in March when I was looking into it. I've been meaning to do this video for a while but I just haven't got around to it. And in this video I'm going to show you the, the wire up first, so I'm going to show you how to wire it up, which you should probably know anyway. Um, and then I'm going to show you the problem, so I'll try and show you the problem with one of these here, which I'll just show you. Really you need, to, you need this in order to detect the problem. You're not going to need one of these to detect the problem, because I've already done it. But this is just to show you, you know, how I detected the problem, and therefore was able to work out the solution. So I'll show you that. And then... Um, I'll show you Modbus, we'll take a look at Modbus, the Modbus spec, in a bit more depth, and then I'll show you a solution. Now I believe there are probably a lot of solutions, but I'll just show you what I did in order to make this ESP32 work. Of course, the first thing we need to do is to wire this thing up. So, uh, I'm going to use two of these, and I'll, you'll see why in a minute. But you can see here that I've got one of the backs cut, so if I just pull that away, like that. I'll just put that to one side. We're not going to need that at the moment. And then push that in there like that. You can see that they, they sort of group together. So now I've got one big board. And that's useful because otherwise these are not particularly friendly when it comes to breadboards. So I'm going to fit this in here like this. So let's go let's go there. And push the ESP32 in. Oh, also, as you can see, this isn't the standard ESP32, but it's more or less the same thing. It doesn't matter which ESP32 you've got, they're all more or less the same. So now the uh, converter. So this is the Max 485 uh, TTL to, um, to uh, what's it called, RS485 converter. And of course Modbus works off that. So we need to push that in too. Let's put that uh, there like that. So up to now we've got the two things in place very simple. Now I'll get some wires. Okay, so now it's time to wire this up. The first thing I'll do is go from ground to ground. And the next thing I'll do is go from VCC. This is a 5 volt device, so we'll need to go to 5 volts on the SP32. Then the next thing I'll do is wire up the uh, driver enable and receiver enable pins here. So driver enable and receiver enable, uh, well, I kind of kind of does what it says on the tin. So driver enable enables this to drive and receiver enable enables this to receive. Because with RS485 there's like a switching mechanism which says yeah okay you can you can receive now or yeah okay you can transmit now. And these are sort of inside the chip wired the opposite way around. Uh, so if you set uh, if you set both of these high the it switches one off and one on and the, the other way around. So, um, so connect them together, and then I'm going to connect those two to a uh, pin I know. I'm going to say IO33, so pin 33, okay? Now, the next thing I'll do is wire... Um, right, let's have a look. We'll need to wire uh, in. Right, I'm not going to do a full wire up here, I'm just going to show you the, the basics. So I want to go from driver in to TX0. So we're going to transmit from here to the input here. And RO, 
which is receiver out goes back to here once you received the message. But I'm not going to show you that, it's not necessary to show you that at the moment. Okay, so this next bit you don't really have to do, have to do but I'll try and explain it anyway. So, um, you've got this A and B, and I'm not going to go into depth because to be quite honest I don't really understand it fully, but I know that these channels here, uh, they, they connect to the device that you want to talk to. But what I want to do in my case, I want to go from the A channel, instead of going to the device, because obviously you want to send the command through here to a device, don't we? But instead of sending it to a command, to a device, I'm going to send it to my logic analyzer. So go to channel 1, which is white. So now we can read uh, whatever comes out of that, um, that pin. And the next thing I want to do is connect ground, because with the logic analyzer I've got to connect ground, so that will be black, so I'll connect black. Uh, that forms some sort of a reference. And I also want to connect this here. So remember that DE and RE are uh, connected together, but I do need to check that channel. So I'm going to go from grey. Grey, where's the grey pin? There it is. So now, if I just zoom out, I can show you what I've got. I've got this thing connected, as I said, and I've got these connected. So I've got ground to ground. This one here which is the A output thing to channel 0 and I've got grey which is channel 1 going to the D, E and R, E pins. So that's all I need to do for the time being. So essentially we've got a, we've got like a, a bogus a bogus Modbus device if you like. Well that's where I'm going to uh, tell you it is for the time being anyway. So all I need to do now is connect them both up. So I've got my micro USB here <coughs> and I've got my mini USB for the logic analyzer. So now I'm going to connect them up to the PC, go over to the PC and we'll carry on. So I've got my logic analyzer. It appears to be a fake one. Uh, the real one seems to be made by this company, uh, Salai Logic. And um, they supply this software and it's really great software and it's no doubt cost them a lot of money. So I suppose what I should really do is buy the genuine product which then supports further developments. Um, so you know if, if you can and you can afford that it's probably always better to buy the, the proper one but anyway I'm using this software here and um, so if I use a standard library Modbus library like I would on the Arduino but use it on the SP32 we'll likely see this problem that I'm about to demonstrate so I'll click start and let's just analyze some samples from the SP32 and uh, we'll go from there so we've got some samples and this is just a request to read in uh, to read some data and I send a request to have data once a second so let's just zoom out so you can see the requests there and if we have a quick zoom into one of them they appear to be uh, okay all right but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the analyzer on so click analyzer go to show more analyzers click Modbus channel 0 the bit rate, or the board rate, sorry, is 115200, and it will be this no parity one stop bit. So what happens here? Read input registers. So it looks like it's got it, but you can see here, the output from the SP32 is this. Device 1, function, blah, 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 start address, quantity, and it says invalid checksum. So why has it got an invalid checksum? I'll show you why now. By the way, this isn't the only problem. There's two potential problems that the ESP32 can do. This is just one of those problems. Anyway, so I'll zoom in and you can see here that there are, it's supposed to be seven or eight bytes. I think it's seven bytes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. But you can see here what's happening. So we've got a byte here which represents the ID uh, and, you know, byte here which represents, you know, the address and whatever else. But you can see what's happening. The this one here, this is the driver enable um, pin. And you can see here that there's the transmission, so it's transmitting all the bytes over to the device, but you can see that it's cut short here, so the driver enable pin is turned off before the transmission's finished. And that is the problem with the SP32, that's the problem. It's really as simple as that. 